Happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome back to the Study Seven podcast entitled The Bat Story, The Prologue. This is lesson three. And Sunday's session entitled In the Beginning, The Diving Logos. Now, the text there is John chapter one, verse one to five, which reads In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in, in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So basically, in on the Sunday section, they were giving us a back story of or basically explaining John chapter one, verse one to three, basically. So John one, um, it says in the beginning was the word. Um, this one was alluding to Genesis 1 1, which said, In the beginning, also, when God created the heavens and the earth. Next, the word, and the word was with God. Um, John indicates that he was in the bosom of the Father. No matter how we try to envision what this exactly means, one thing is sure, and that is Jesus and the Father are immense, are intimately close. And then he says, And the word was God. But how can the word be with God and God at the same time? Now, the answer is found in the Greek. Greek has a definite article, the, but no indefinite article, a or an. So they only use the. What's important for us then is that the Greek definite article, the, points to particularly, particularity, some particular object or person. And in this case, it was God. In the phrase, the word was with God. The term God has the article, thus pointing to a particular individual, the father. Um, the apostle, the apostle Paul verifies, the apostle John verifies this understanding for John 1, 3 and 4 says that Jesus is the creator of all things created and anything that once didn't exist, but then came into existence. This so only through Jesus, the creator of the creator God from the days of eternity. The Lord Jesus Christ was with, was one with the father. He was the image of God, the image of his greatness and majesty the outshining of his glory. So we see here that Jesus basically is God. I know some persons um, that are not of the faith find that hard to grasp the, the whole aspects of the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, um, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. But the, the writer of the lesson was actually trying to um, allude to the fact that Jesus and God were the same or are the same person or deity. Yeah. I would say what jumped out to me in Sunday session though is how, um, as you mentioned, John sets up the opening few sentences of the book. Um, it starts with, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and all things were made through him. And as you said, um, it alludes to this whole idea of um, creation. And when we go down to verse four, it says that in him was life and that life was a light of men. And when we go back to the whole Genesis creation, we see God steps into the world in the beginning. And he introduced light, light and he introduced life to the universe. So here John is sort of showing that the same Jesus that steps into this, that stepped into the dark universe and created life on here on earth. He's once again, stepping in to earth to bring that light and that life back to men. Mm -hmm. So running into Monday section, um, entitled the world, the word made flesh. Um, notice that when John begins his gospel writing, he alludes to Jesus but never actually mentions him by name. Instead, he uses this Greek term logos. And of course, we're not going to find that term in our Bibles because it has been translated to the word. Mm -hmm. But when John uses this term, he uses it to describe Jesus as being the logos. Yes, he is the word, but John more mis uh, specifically means that this word is the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because God reveals his truth to us by essentially becoming one of us. He became flesh and dwelt among us. And that's literally, he, he's showing us how to live this truth. He's showing this, this truth in a physical sense. And in John 14, when it, John 1, 14, when it says that this word became flesh and dwelt among us, um, the lesson highlights that this term dwell refers to pitching a tent, which in a sense takes us back to the Exodus story uh, when God instructed the Israelites to make him a sanctuary so that they could, so that he could dwell with them mm -hmm. in the same way Jesus stepped into this human flesh 
in a sense, his human intent, mm -hmm. so that we could come into contact with him in the same way. Um, my my take from Monday was that simply was that God was taking His time to actually become like us, right? When it says um the the word was made flesh, like God actually came from heaven to become human like us. And of all the ways that God could actually um, save humanity, of all the ways that, cause I mean, he's all powerful, God could do anything. Yeah. He actually chose to take on flesh to actually suffer with us, among us, as one of us, yeah. for us, right? I also think it's a um, more relatable version of the, the, the scripture, I guess, right? Cause if Jesus would have been, so I guess as a word, this is something that they would have been reading over time mm -hmm. and seeing and hearing about, mm -hmm. but then seeing a real life version of the same things that would have been spoken about over the time period, also being or finally being enacted in someone. Yeah, I think it, it kind of, I guess, made it slightly more relatable, even though when you get the my part on Tuesday, you'll see that they didn't really accept it. Didn't matter. I was <laughs> gonna ask you so, wait, a lot of um, people was having difficulty accepting I, him as. I, I am not 100% certain, right? Mm -hmm. But what we do know is that they didn't accept them. Mm -hmm. All of them did not accept them. I would say it's a sort of failure to understand what truth was. Mm -hmm. They had their own truth, but what God's truth was totally different. They expected this. Um, I think we spoke about it in the previous lesson about um, this um, earthly. earthly ruler, mm -hmm. earthly conqueror and stuff like that. But that was not what God really and truly intended. Mm -hmm. So their truth and God's truth didn't really align. And so I guess that's maybe one of the great problems that we have in the world today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I will also just say that it's easy to like, so I guess a list of rules and say, well, these things should not be done. Yeah. This we should really do, et cetera. And it just would have come to actually showcase that it could actually it could be, done. be done. You know, like, and I think that, I, I, I mean, we weren't in his time, so we can't really say, right? But it would kind of give us a little more motivation or hope to know, well, this person is actually here living like us and actually being able to do these things. So there's a possibility that we could also do it too. Yeah. Right. Um, but before we move on, I, I, sometimes I not have difficulty with it, but difficulty understanding it because like, some um in, in in the previous lesson it spoke about um uh, though jesus came to the world and took upon himself our humanity he always kept his divinity so based on your interpretation this tells us that he wasn't like constantly in his divine state but he was some somewhat in his human state um uh, at points so like i find it i don't want to say a, an advantage <laughs> but jesus still had his divinity like he okay, yeah. he still was yeah, like, oh. <laughs> right you know what i'm saying so like i find although he was the perfect example mm. i still find advantage. myself thinking that jesus had an advantage but i guess the the main point of matter is that i guess technically he could still sin if he was human mm. and he didn't okay and so it shows us that this this journey essentially isn't necessarily impossible if we really commit ourselves as you mentioned you not walk with god mm -hmm. In yeah, a sense, yeah, yeah. Enoch is sort of accomplished the same thing in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if Enoch pulled it off, Jesus pulled it off, then we, we should be able to pull it off technically. All right. Well, I guess working with Stefan's point as I move on to choose there, right? Yeah. Um, it says that John would have painted a harsh reality um, of Jesus coming into the world uh, to be a savior from sin, mm -hmm. but many still did not receive him. Yeah. Right. Now, let me look at it from what you would have mentioned, doesn't Stefan? We're. Jesus would have come in and kind of still had a little access to God. So he had a little, what do you call it? Power. It's just a simple fight. Right? A little, a lot. Right. And even with those things that he was able to do, person still did not accept him to be the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the, the, the access to the divinity did not even aid the mission mm -hmm. because person still did not accept him. Yeah. Right. And although that would have been said or continue on that same vein, his own people, the Israelites, did not ask him. Mm -hmm. And many of them did not recognize him as the Messiah, right? Paul also speaks about this in Romans 9, 1 to, Romans 9 to 11, and says that the Jews and Gentiles would also potentially believe in Jesus, mm -hmm. and those were not his people, mm -hmm. right? Um, but although Jesus would have come here and come to be our savior and showcase hints of the fact that he was 
the person to come back and save us. Yeah. We still did not accept him generally as a people, mm. but it doesn't necessarily just end there. The conclusion of John 20, 31 shares that persons can also access Jesus, although some of them didn't want to, mm -hmm. if they just believe in him, right? And mm -hmm. they will be able to have eternal life. And I would say that if Jesus came down to earth and he would have been able to showcase his divinity somewhat, because he didn't fully do it, but he did some things that were miraculous, right? Mm -hmm. Turning water into wine and all the other miracles that he would have done. And that still wasn't enough. Like, you think that if that had happened here now in 2024, that that would be enough for you? It would be enough for me. You feel so? Yeah. But people doing miraculous things, I don't know. What you don't think that? Seeing is believing for me. Seeing is believing? Yeah, but I mean, you hear a lot of testimonies. People in church give testimonies of how God would have, would have healed him. Is it that you don't believe that God did these things? No, nah, I believe, but I'm saying that. So if, then you're seeing the evidence and then you still. I'm saying that if God was actually there mm. in present, okay. like, it would, it would prove more for me All right, not well, more but not that i need it but i'm just saying like it would it would actually be like a you know we could call it a slap in the face like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well that's one person right but all these people back in the day that was not enough for them yeah but although that was the fact and he came and interacted with them and showcased that he was the, the messiah and all that stuff and it just wasn't good enough um oh. we could still what was interesting though yeah. what you're saying you're saying it wasn't enough right but mm. there are countless um um stories which which we just um had one last lesson of the blind man where we actually see that it was enough for him mm -hmm. right so they're they're in in, in one breath we're saying it wasn't enough but it was enough for the persons who did not know actually know christ but then the persons who actually know christ it was not enough for them so is it really that it's not enough or are we looking at it um not we're not right. focusing on the right what we say is it wasn't enough for the masses right a few people would believe yeah uh we don't know like any ratios or any numbers to say well of the million people that jesus would have interacted with um five thousand people um believed in him we don't necessarily know any numbers or anything right we have a few stories uh which showcase accounts of just interacting with persons and then they would have believed that he was a messiah etc but on a grand scale much people didn't really been into but after you, after the feeling of five thousand all the people uh after jesus left all them people still get on boats and went looking for Jesus because they actually believe that you know this was so it's like I, I believe or a I think as the Bible mentioned that they were looking for food they were looking yeah, for food big, right? yeah they were so. looking for food too but I, I I still think that especially when when they give the account again sorry sorry to go back to the last lesson time but when they give the account of the 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 Pharisees when they had the council mm. that they on one hand they were saying that this man was blind his whole life and it, it clearly can't be Jesus because this man was doing healing on his Sabbath. And then other persons were like, but this, these, these miracles too great for a sinful man to be doing these things. Mm. So like, I guess. You know, um, like in a very simple scenario, you know, you might be looking for something. Let me say you lost your keys, right? You dig up the whole house and the car and things trying to find these keys and you can't find them but it was in a very obvious place when you do finally find it. Mm -hmm. I think that because they were looking for the Messiah so much when it was easily presented to them, mm -hmm. they did not accept that that was him, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was too yeah. simple. The solution was a little too simple. Yeah, it was too easy, right? But sort of moving into Wednesday section on this whole idea of belief and unbelief. And we see that it's pretty central to the book of John. And in fact, the lesson noted that the known faith or belief doesn't actually appear in the book of John. But the, ber the verb believe appears 98 times, which should show its importance. But even more so, the fact that he uses a verb instead of a noun highlights the fact that this faith or this belief that we should have should essentially be active. So being a believer or being a Christian shouldn't be just a noun or a name that we go by, but it should be a verb, a way that we live, a way that we act, the way that we move. And James 2.19 highlights that even demons believe in God should we call them christians too no because what separates us from them is the way that we carry ourselves the way that we we live for our beliefs mm -hmm. yeah all right i'm moving along on thursday thursday would have showcased like the the human the wednesday would have showcased the human aspects of uh, the gospel of john right focusing on people's interactions and their understanding of, of how of who jesus was 
Uh, today's study, which is Thursday, shift study, divine and cosmic storyline. The Gospel of John begins by presenting Jesus as the divine creator, emphasizing that everything was made through him. It okay. highlighted that he was his incarnation and the concept of his glory, linking his glorification to his crucifixion. Now, when I saw that last night, I was like, what? What's a glorifying about getting killed, getting put on a piece of, foot, piece of wood, yeah. um, getting nails bored to your hand, and dying? You know, like, it was kind of crazy. But essentially, what the lesson has to say was, if you look at it from one perspective, Jesus as a man, a regular person, going through this process of crucifixion, that wasn't any good. Right? Yeah, like, humiliating. That was like the worst way to die back in the day. Yeah. Sure, as humans, probably from worse, like, um, means of killing mm -hmm. one another, right? Of late. But from that perspective, as a human being, it was like terrible. Yeah. But when you look at it as Jesus, as this man who come out to save all these human beings from sin, it was like the best thing that he could have ever done. True. Because on one, death, terrible, but by dying as the savior, he was then able to provide an opportunity for all the persons on the earth, including those who would have been there crucifying him, yeah. uh, an opportunity to be saved. And yeah. there's a link between John and Luke, which kind of showcases like the symbolization, symbolizing of the salvation and mercy and the actions that he would have taken at the cross. Yeah. Um, for me, what really stood out in Thursday's section is something that you alluded to just now, but really God's ability to sort of flip situations on its head. Mm -hmm. So something that was seemingly terrible, he was able to turn over. So the lesson highlighted, yeah, Jesus's crucifixion. Um, but we also could think of other instances in Bible, Daniel in the lens, then was a, a terrible situation. Three Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew mm -hmm. boys. Um, even Paul's imprisonment, he was able to write a lot of letters that went to the church that really encouraged us even now today. And I think, even the fact that God could use these sort of negative situations back then shows that he can do the same in our lives today. Sometimes we sort of think that negative situations are um, only about us. Mm. But as Stefan mentioned um, in the previous lesson, we, we, the whole guy with the blind um, situation, the disciples asked him, why is he like this? But he said, he's like this to showcase God's glory, essentially. Mm -hmm. And sometimes bad things may happen to us. Doesn't necessarily mean that God's not looking out for us, but when we come on the other side, it could be all for his glory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is is ironic, or as it was said in the lesson, paradoxical. Yeah. To see like something terrible turning into good, like that one man is things. Mm -hmm. Like in my mind, it's like, wait, you can't just be saying good in the first place, you know? Correct. Uh, but God has got God has his way of doing things. So he's just got allowing some things to do what you gotta do. Um, because we don't know exactly what his entire will is for us. But just have to have faith to know that, like in this scenario where he would have been crucified, that there's some good to come of the bad situation. Yeah, right. it's hey. true. Um, mm -hmm. But as we wrap up our short discourse on this week's lesson, uh, it's around the prayer for us. Yeah, no problem. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity we have to study your word. We pray that it'll be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. We pray that you will continue to strengthen our faith, strengthen our belief in you, so that when you come again, you will save us all in your kingdom. Bless this podcast. Bless those who are listening. And join us. And we'll be here again next week to study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thanks for coming through to another lesson. Uh, study review with the study 17. Um, be sure to follow us next. Follow us on YouTube. And check us out next week as we discuss lesson four. Until next time, have a good night.